and welcome everybody to the 31st anniversary Magic Mike's Castle Reunion Show. Hey, we love you all. So come along with me, we'll visit the castle of fantasies, magic drawings and special songs, there's no forgetful, we'll take you along. So come along with me, enter the castle and what will we see? Each week there's something new waiting for you, alphabet lunch and we'll speak French with you. Come along with me, we'll visit the castle of fantasies. Rather than actually redo a show in modern times, we've decided, we being the boys and I, to give you a glimpse backstage, a retrospective of how the show started, and the motivation behind doing the show. Oh, wow, that was just like, holy cow, that's a long time ago. The show started in July of 1989, quickly transitioning from Kitty Cabaret, which was on the air for about three, four years, completely different theme. It involved clowns, I was always surrounded by clowns, and, believe it or not, the inkling of the puppets. The, the puppet theater featured Daryl Scarrett as the puppeteer and uh, Desmond Forgetful, a Unicorn, all of them were in the scene. Little did I know that years later when we changed the format to the castle format, Daryl would come along and bring those puppets with him. With the brand new format imminent, there was no time for me to draw, paint, or create a castle other than through using chroma key. And chroma key, in, in case you don't know how that process works, a green screen is placed behind people and through uh, technical engineering, whatever scene, drawing, or video um, that is wanted by the production crew is brought behind the person. So the illusion of an actual castle is created. That castle image was pasted and, and copied and whatever manually, that was before computer stuff, by me and superimposed behind me. Okay, rev your engines! Oh yeah, get out the green flag. With not much else, we went to air mid-July or thereabouts of 1989. The characters were myself, Desmond and Forgetful, and we had sort of a screwball clown character named Dingbat, and she would walk on carrying a toaster or schlepping the toaster behind her, which apparently spoke to her. Everyone, it was both days. Hey, yeah, you, you know, we had so much fun. I think we're going to try doing this again. The original name was based on my stage name at the time, which was Merlin. Yes, kids, believe it or not, I called myself Merlin, Michael Merlin, Magic Mike Merlin, then eventually just Magic Mike. Nowadays, I'm Magic Mike Likey because of the pr proliferance of uh, many Magic Mikes throughout North America and the world. With a logo that said Merlin's Magic Castle, uh, something that I quickly thrown together as well, we went to air and we never looked back. The show opened generally with me doing what's called a walk-on. I either pretend that I'm dusting or cleaning the castle, and then we do a tight shot on the broom, which would supposedly talk. Do what you... Oh, hey, Dusty, how are you this week? I'm fine. You have a new trick for us this week? As a matter of fact, I do. I was just telling the boys and girls about it. We'll set you over here. And the broom would just say whatever it would to me. I would do uh, an introduction to the show and call on the boys, Desmond and Forgetful, which, by the way... And maybe we'll call on Desmond and Forgetful to help with this one. We'll see. Oh, oh hey, Wiz, how's it going? Forgetful, I'm over here. Oh, there hey, I am. hey, that's you. This is me, this is me. Oh, and... hey, wait, but I thought this was you. No, no, this is this is big and round, very large and dark and... Uh, oh, could be your brother, I guess. Eh? I'm wondering if you don't need maybe glasses. Do you need glasses? Oh, no, I think I need more rest. 
Oh, probably. There he goes. Let's see if Desmond is here. Hey, there's Desmond and his cool shades. Yeah, my chocolate bar sunglasses. Here, take a wheel. That's uh, scratch and sniff, eh? Yeah, take a wheel. Go ahead. Oh, that's great. Where are the boys? Oh, uh, well, Wiz, it's a little hot where we are. So you all see out there, through the magic of modern technology, how it brought Desmond and Forgetful all the way from Winnipeg to our studios here in Vancouver, Canada. Wow, we're just, we're just so amazed, we're speechless. In the old days, we had my castle set up, my castle backdrop. It was, oh, many, many, many feet wide. I painted it by hand on a sort of a canvas, a flexible canvas, and it was pinned up behind us. And we would do in the olden days what was called following the action. So the camera people and the switcher would go from wide shot to two head shot to uh, close up for the close up magic. And they kind of knew my patterns and rhythms by the seventh, eighth, ninth season of the show. So they would pretty much know what segments, where I was going, and when. Take a look at uh, a little bit of footage from back then. Castle and Mike. Grandpa Tom, thank you for coming. Hello, Desmond. Hello, Forgetful. Hey, how's it going? Did you bring us some chicken soup? Some Baba's chicken soup? Yeah. <laughs> That's the best kind, isn't it? Oh, boy, oh, boy. It's great to have you back to the castle, um, Grandpa Tom. I understand you're a member of the Society of American Magicians. That's right. And the local branch, Magic Circle Magic 7. Magic Circle 7, that's correct. And how long have you been a member? Well, we're in our third year now of being with the uh, Magic Circle 7. And uh, we're absolutely having the time of our lives. It's we're lots having a of fun, great eh? time doing magic, and Sam helps me quite a bit. And tonight we brought some new magic for you. Oh, terrific. Oh, right. yeah. I'd like to see some, wouldn't you guys? Oh, yeah, you bet. Terrific. We're going what to do, do we have? We're going to do a trick called the Talking Queen. Now, what we're going to do, each of us have a deck of cards. And we're going to take the cards out of the package. So it's a sealed, two sealed packs Absolutely of cards. Absolutely sealed. And we'll take out the two jokers. If we took out the two jokers, Desmond and Forgetful wouldn't be here. Whoops. Oh! Well, what are they using seals for? And this <laughs> trick is called the talking queen. So we've got the four queens over here. Yeah. Put yours down, Sam, if you will, please. There. It looks like now. a poker game. Now, in order to do this, we have to have you participate, and you sure. have to tell us which queen will talk for you. Okay. Oh, did you drop your card, Sam? That's all right. We can go. Could have been worse. It could have happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> I see Sam has magically disappeared. Hey, Sam, pretty good. Let's go for some French fries and peanut butter. Fine. Okay, gather gather okay. them all together, if you will, Sam. And we'll, we'll just carry on sure. with this one. Okay? We always carry on. All right. Now, which queen would you like to have do the talking for you? Uh, queen of Hearts is fine. Queen of Hearts is fine. Now, what I'd like you to do so is make the queen of hearts. three cuts mm -hmm. of the deck, if you will, please. All right. Let's cut it three times? Cut or it three, three times, times, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that comes after two. There's one, one two, three. two, three. All right. There we now, go. Now, if you had your choice of these three decks, mm -hmm. which one would you take? I would take the full deck. No, I would take, say, that one. you take that one. And I would take this one. All right. And what we'll do, we'll just take the top card of that one. And what I'd like you to do, I'd like you to take your queen mm -hmm. and slip it underneath the card just far enough so that the eyes can see what the card is. Alrighty. But please don't flash it because that makes the trick too easy. Alrighty. Would you do that? There we go. Her eyes are just beneath the card. There we okay. go. Okay. I'm now, getting my deck ready. Good. Now hold... <laughs> good job, Sam. Good job. Hold the card up to your ear and see if the queen is talking to you. She is. What is she saying? She's saying Bubba's chicken soup is the best. Yes, and what Get else? Is she telling you what the card is? No, she's saying don't plant your corn in August. <laughs> That's good advice. You know what she just asked me? <laughs> what? She says, what's red and goes ding dong? I know that one. <laughs> it's a red ding dong. That's right. What's that? Oh, what's blue and goes ding dong? <laughs> they only come in red. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> May I? Specialty start. Specialty start. <laughs> She's saying to me, <laughs> Magic Mike is not paying attention. The card is the Jack of Spades. Would you be good enough to turn over the Jack of Spades for us? Sure. 
now. There it is. It is the same jack of spades that the queen got. Right. Terrific. Now, that is terrific. Oh, you have amazing. to acknowledge that. Now, we have a master size card over here that we'd like, perhaps in the magic of the magic castle, we can zoom in on this and see what that card is over so there. So this pad is actually a card underneath? That's right. Let's have oh, a look and see. It is wow. also a jack of spades, a jumbo jack of spades. Isn't that ever neat? Look at that. That's amazing. Oh, boy, oh, boy. That's oh, super. Think, Sam? That's very good. Thank you, Grandpa Tom. That was very good. Oh, Isn't wow. That that's pretty bodacious there. There this, we go. Uh, now, now, Sam has a similar pad. Oh. And what he'd like you to do, <laughs> cut that one in three, if you will, Should please. Should I do that, Sam? All righty. So I'll cut it into three piles like that. All right. Now, which pile would you like to take of these? I'll take that one. You'll take that one. And we'll take this one, and we'll leave one card out in the open. And similarly, which card, which queen would you like to use to have do the Queen top? of Hearts is good as well. Queen of Hearts is sure. good. Sure. Let, let Magic Mike do that, Sam, because he's the one that's going to try and determine what that card is. Would you Should be good enough that? to do that for us? <laughs> sure. Magic Mike? There we go. We'll slip it underneath. Right. All right. And what is she saying to you? I took my stop play with a full deck. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. It's true. And she said, I'm a real card and I have to be dealt with. <laughs> oh, what a cut up. What a but cut up. But did she tell you what the card no. is? No, she didn't. Sam, would you hold it up to your ear and see if she'll tell you? Sorry, you got the What is she telling you? Queen, pardon? King of Spades. King of Spades. Let Mike turn it over. Would is you that do right? That? Is it really the King of Spades? You can check. Let's see. Oh, it is the King of Spades. Then, do you also have a big card under here, too? Mm -hmm. Let's see. That would be really, really neat. Let's see. Oh, they're both kings of spades. How about hey, that? Well yeah, done, that's Sam. Hey, that's pretty right. Very good. good. Thank you very much, Sam Kovnats. Thank you very much, <laughs> Grandpa <laughs> Tom Kovnats. Will it's been you, a delight. It's, been, it's always a delight having you. Will you guys come back a little later? Absolutely. Terrific. We're going to join the rest of the group and watch the show. Terrific. Other segments of the um, uh, Magic Mike's Castle show included uh, picking a word from the mirror. We have a modern day mirror now which sometimes makes its appearance in my modern productions. Take a look. Hey Magic Mike. Or even this. The word for this week is Ghanif, meaning thief. Let's see if the uh, the mirror is around. Awaken has uh, has a word for us, so we'll see if the mirror is there. Mirror, are you awake? Yes, Magic Mike. Do you have a new word for us this week? Sure do. Alrighty, we'll pull it out and we'll see. No, it's not on, but in fact, it is an O, which spells no. Well, boys, should we do a song? Can you still sing? Inside a song, where the big or small is a magical word that we all can use. Just say no if it don't feel right. Just say no to drugs. No. Just say no to alcohol. Just say no and you'll feel true. No. La 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 la. Remember you are not alone Tell a policeman a parent Just say no if it don't feel right no. Just say no to glue Just say no to stranger no. Just say no and you'll feel true No, no, I say no I say no, no, no Just say no if it don't feel right just say no to drugs Just say no to cigarettes Just say no and you'll feel true No! La 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 Just say no! 
That's it. Just say no. It's very, very easy. It goes like that. Point those ears. Flap those wings. Shake the tail. Let's all sing to the bat. It goes like that. Point those ears. Flap those wings. Shake the tail. Let's all sing to the bat. It goes like that. Hurt back, brown back, even flying fox. These are only sideways. They're sure a lot. Point those ears. Flap those wings. Shake the tail. Let's all sing to the bat. It goes like that. Point those ears, flap those wings, shake the tail, let's all sing to the bat. It goes like that. Nocturnal creatures visually appear, sleep by day in the evening with their lair. Point those ears, flap those wings, shake the tail, let's all sing to the bat. It goes like that. Point those ears, flap those wings, shake the tail, let's all sing to the bat. It goes like that. Point those ears, flap those wings, shake the tail, let's all sing to the bat. Other segments included one of my favorites, the drawing segment, where the boys would suggest very spontaneously, we never set this up before the show, uh, details of a drawing, and I would spontaneously draw the drawing and either give it out to a child or a parent or whoever happened to be in our studio audience at the time, or I'd mail it out to a so-called winner of a contest, uh, whatever contest we'd be holding that week or that month. Much like this. Hey guys, should I do a drawing? That's that's pretty bodacious, but you still know how to draw.
And those were just some of the segments on our show. We had a French lesson. We had an ecology um, word of the day or tip. We had many other things. We even had, at one point, a different puppet bringing on that week's mail. And don't kid yourself, we had tons of mail. See if we got any mail this week. We'll see if old Much is in the cauldron. Much. Let's see if Much is here. There's old Much. How are you this week, Much? Oh, that's great. Oh, we have another envelope for us, huh? Great. We'll just pull that off and... What's that? Oh, if we have time, we'll read the rest of the book. Very good. Oh, oh boy, I think he's, thre he's threatening us there. He's gone again. Oh, well. There we go. We'll place the cauldron off to the side and let's see. Yeah, I was wondering if that rabbit realized ah. that we could easily make him into stew. This is addressed to Desmond and Forgetful. This is actually for you guys. It's not for even... For us! It's not even for Magic Mike. Well, we got mail. Holy. All right, we'll open this up. This is from the city of Winnipeg. We've been evicted. Wow! No, it is. It is actually from the city of Winnipeg. But it's a thank you letter. A thank you letter? Thank you letter. I'm going to read this. This is to Desmond and Forgetful. It says, Dear Desmond and Forgetful, on behalf of the City Centre Fort Rouge Parks and Recreation Branch, I would like to take this opportunity to personally thank you, not Magic Mike, but you, Wow. For, for coming out and doing a show on July 25th at the Penny Carnival. That's right, we went out there. It was lots of fun. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a big fan of your VPW spot. Do you have a VPW spot somewhere? Oh, hey, wait, is there spots on us? And wish you two the best of luck in your professional career. By the way, uh, if you are looking for a new agent, dump that guy with a mustache and give me a call. Hmm. Mm, must, I wonder who they're talking must about. Must be talking about Daryl, probably. And this is from Jordan Self? Rec Tech Play I think advisor. that's Jodine. Jodine? Mm -hmm. J-O-D-I-A-N. From Jodine. Thank you, Jodine, for the nice letter. We certainly had a good time going out there. Now, back in those days, I was always mocking things, and kids didn't get it. They would take my live shows when I was called to do a corporate function or a birthday party or whatever event, special event, was happening at the time at Winnipeg. Um, I'd play the show straight to the kids, but also throw in some jokes and some humor aimed at the adults. So it was sort of multi-tiered. The adults would kind of get my show, my live shows, on a certain level, and the kids would just take it for a neat magic show, supposedly. Back in those days, I, I averaged about 250 magic shows a year. And I'm not saying that to brag. It, it, to me, it's impressive. I could never do something like that ever again. Um, because basically, I never said no to my agents. I thought, well, I'm going to make the money while it's there, while you can. And uh, I was very grateful for all those gigs, all those shows that came along. Of course, we supported the Society of Young Magicians and had many young people who were up-and-coming magicians on the now, show. What these are, they're big cards. And these cards have special names. Like, um, this card here is called a whole card, because it has a hole in it. And this one here is called a whole card, because it's the whole thing. And this one's just like the second one, a whole card. This is just like the first one, a whole card. Now, now notice on the back of these whole cards, there's red, so that when you put it like this, it looks like a spa card, same as this over here. Now, when you tap this, this stays on here and it won't come off. And under here, we're left with a whole bunch of spots. Holy! Well, we're left with this spa card, but it's not really a spa card. It's just a whole card on the back of a whole card. So if we go like this, let's tap it. It's this has become a spa card because the spot has covered the entire card. Now, we're getting so confused here, we can't tell if this is a whole card, a whole card, a spa card. Tap it. It's a spa card with a hole. So you have a spot card with a hole, a spot that's covered the whole card, a whole bunch of spots. The reason this is so confusing that everybody's watching the spots, nobody's watching the hole. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. Very oh, good. Pretty. Oh, that is a very cute trick. That is very, very nice. And that's a trick by a... Uh, Invented by a famous magician named Daryl? Yeah. Not Daryl Scarrett, but it is Daryl. I'm getting to be famous, though. Daryl Martinez, I believe his name is. Scott, I have to thank you so much for dropping thank by you. the castle uh, again this week. It's always an open invitation for you to come by, and perhaps you'll 
visit us a little bit later near the end of our visit? Sure. Great, that would be super. Let's clap for Scott Burton from the SYM. Wow, that was just like, holy cow, that's a long time ago. Of course, sometimes the crew would dress up, they'd wear a weird costume or funny hat or whatever, and they would do a walk-on, totally unexpected. So um, it was a lot of fun to improvise in those days. Take a look at this. Let, let's, oh, hey, wait a second. This isn't Sila. Who's oh, there? Hey, wait, here's, we got a big cat here. Oh, yikes. <laughs> hey, settle down, settle down. What's your name? Y you don't talk? Ah, but do you have a name? Did a good job cleaning the fireplace anyway. Ah, oh, neat. Boy, it looks like you're really pussyfooting around this time, hey? Kind of looks like a Pink Panther sort of thing, huh? A Pink Panther? I think so. No? Oh, hey, wait, that, that, that's one of our friends there from the uh, forest there. From the, from the forest there? Which forest is this? I think this is our leftover from New Year's. <laughs> I think so. I was also a big fan in those days of Dave, David Letterman, and um, he was very self-deprecating. He had self-deprecating humor and all of that, and I worked that into my live shows, and it kind of leaked into my TV show. Check out this clip when we had a special visitor to the castle. Hey, Sila, and <laughs> there we go. How are you, Sila? Oh, I'm quite fine, Magic Mike. How are you? <laughs> Good husky voice. Oh, it's great to meet you. Now, I understand you're here to promote uh, Smoke Free Grads by the year 2000, right? That's right, Magic Mike. We're looking for all of our, all of our future graduates to stop smoking right away. That's, that's terrific. Oh, that's, that's a very good idea because smoking is bad for your health, isn't it? That's right. Smoking is horrible. It's Never. terrible. That's right. I just want to show all the boys and girls this neat poster that you brought us uh, last time before you came. This is our Smoke Free Grads 2000. And there you are on the poster. There's Sila. And um, some boys and girls will have a chance to win this. Okay win this poster if you all write in and we'll keep this poster at the castle write in and give five good reasons why you should not smoke okay and the uh, the first winner will get the poster we also have some other prizes too we have some stickers i might as well show the stickers now we have all about the balloons oh i love the balloons balloons and goodies ah there's one there oh i can't really reach that balloon maybe you can we have some stickers how can i reach it i'm not that, that big a whole pack of all these neat stickers okay so someone will win the poster someone will win the second runner-up will win all these neat stickers and the third winner Oh, there they are down there. Oh, there it is, and there's our balloon too. Maybe Magic Mike will blow this up. <laughs> oh, he does it, Wiz. We don't want you to hurt yourself. There we go. We've got the break free balloon and the nice Partners for Health logo on the back. So, we've got all these neat prizes to give away for the winners. I'd like you all to mail in five good reasons, and if you want to put little drawings to them, to why you should not smoke. I understand you brought us something else for us all to look at. Uh, that's right, Magic Mike. We're going to watch a video soon, and uh, you'll really enjoy it. Oh, terrific. So, I don't know if that video is ready. If the video is ready, we're going to all blow magic breath on the count of three and have a look at your rock video. All right. One, two, three, everybody blow magic breath. So all in all, it was a great ride. Started off as Kitty Cabaret for about three, four years, completely different format. Segwayed into Magic Mike's Castle or Merlin's Magic Castle, uh, depending on how old you are and, and what seasons you saw of the show. That lasted about seven seasons. And for my last two or three seasons of the TV show, I sort of chose to switch from a medieval theme to a modern day theme. Let's compare, take a look. Hope you all have your <laughs> paper there. Uh, three pieces of paper, I think. Origami Bob, welcome Magic back. Mike. Good to Origami Bob. <laughs> Magic Mike. <laughs> <laughs> it's really you. <laughs> and it's you. No kidding. What a good summer we had. What, what you are we doing here? Right? I don't know, we zapped you in. <laughs> yeah. You were, you were in your Mike, shop. You right? yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's all. No, don't be. <laughs> you were right in the middle of constructing something, and here yeah, you were. All of a sudden, then. 
thank you for dropping by. Now, <laughs> you, you had a cute little, um, you didn't have much of a choice. <laughs> that you in. Just flew in from L.A. Boy, are my arms mm -hmm. tired. Um, you, you said this nifty thing once on Joey's show. I did? Bits. Yeah, one of those little sayings that you do. It's a tongue twister. Oh, oh yeah. You <laughs> You're wondering what <laughs> Big bad diplopal Bob's basement bargain book and, and beanery. <laughs> Ooh, do, 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 do. <laughs> yes. That's it. I don't want to say that again. Oh, I, I don't think you could. <laughs> no, I couldn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> I hope you guys all have your paper because I don't. Uh, yes, you do. Oh, super. Yes, you do. You look at it. these beautiful things. We have to show everybody you have one how these look. Here. Look I at have this. A color here. Wow. <laughs> <You> have <laughs> this is a like a card here. game almost. <laughs> I have a stem here. I'll see your square and raise you a triangle. <laughs> I'll raise you a smaller square. All right. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Look at these. Where can you get these? Any uh, uh, Various craft stores around town. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't mm -hmm. mention name names or anything, but <laughs> various craft stores Only in passing. Town. Yes. All right. <laughs> That's great. These are beautiful. Okay. Wow. And so we're going to use them to make a very nice flower. Mm -hmm. Now, I brought along two examples. Okay, and I can hold them up if I may. Uh, this is... An origami rose. Now, on one of the earlier shows you had me on, mm -hmm. I showed you I showed you what we like to think is the ultimate origami rose. Uh, this is a good, reasonable facsimile, much simpler to do than the other one. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very nice. And then we've got another little flower right here, mm -hmm. which I think we're going to try to do today. Right. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. The folding method on both of them is almost exactly the same, except on the first one, or the little rose here the one that's shaking, uh, <laughs> a few more folds. And mm -hmm. I'll describe how to do it, but we won't do it because I'm not sure that the time okay. we'll have enough time. Very good. Okay, but we will do this one. And do they end up smelling really nice too after? Uh, if you uh, put perfume on them. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so let's drop those over there all gently. Right. <laughs> and let's take this square first the of all. The big one first. All right. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. what we're going to do first of all is find the center of the paper, and that means we're going to have to fold in half through the middle here, ah, then okay. unfold it and fold in half through the middle here. And where the lines cross is the center. So let's do that first of all. All righty. All right. It's like so this. everybody get their larger square pieces. Yeah. And we'll do this slowly enough. I think that uh, everyone who's trying this at home with us should be able to follow along. Mm -hmm. I okay. love doing this along. It's so fun. Oh, I think it's a great, you know? great thing for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, and fold again. it in half the other way. And when you're making creases, mm -hmm. uh, before you do, make sure you get all the edges and corners and everything lined up as straight as you can. Ah. And make very firm creases. I always recommend when you're beginning to press down very hard. Okay. Make firm creases. Okay? What you're working on there is a little soft. It is. You yes, may have trouble getting creases. Mm -hmm. Now, unfold it again. There we go. There you go, Magic Mike. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take the four corners and do this slowly and neatly. Fold them just to the center. Oh, okay. So those lines cross, all right? I'm always worried that I'm going to botch something up. But well, I am too, and that's why <laughs> I like to take my time and do it slowly. You can go fast and you can make little mistakes, but your models just don't look nice when you're finished. That's true. So it's always nice to take it slowly. Sure. Do a good job. It's right? like anything. It's like anything. Let's that's say you're right. doing a nice drawing. And you don't right. want to necessarily rush through it. So. Okay. And. That's what it looks like when Ooh. you're finished. It looks nice those, already. Those it looks, it looks, nice, looks already. nice already. The color on the paper, the color oh. patterns on the paper really make this one. You know, I wonder if there's a way to actually take white paper and color it on one side. I guess it's people can do that. something right? I do myself. Really? Uh, p yes, really. Uh, mm -hmm. Paint them, uh, watercolors, just all kinds of colors. Just kind of throw it on any way you want. And when you're making flowers or things like butterflies from this kind of paper, mm -hmm. it's gorgeous. It's really gorgeous. See, so you can do that too. You don't necessarily have to go out and buy that. You can, of you can course use, nice oh, that's use wonderful. something from mm -hmm. the uh, writing pad if you like. Okay, now I'll just stop here for a moment and explain that if you were going to do that rose that we showed there, mm -hmm. uh, you would do what we just did here two more times. You would fold the corners into the middle, mm -hmm. okay, and then you would fold corners into the middle again. So you would do that ah. three times. Okay. Okay? But we're not going to do We're that. not going to do that. We're okay. going to do the simple version. Now, what we're going to do is turn it over. Mm -hmm. That is simple. Okay? Look. Which we would do after we had done the other one mm -hmm. in the center three times. Okay. okay? And then we would take the corners and Fold them to the middle. Oh, we're doing that again. Okay, okay, yeah. But remember, we turned it over. Right. Okay. Okay, the last to the center is always turned over. Wow. Okay. And where do you learn your stuff from? From books? Do you I learn my uh, stuff from books, and uh, I make a lot of my own stuff like that. I was going to ask you that. Yeah. After a while, it just comes naturally. I you know? bet. It's, ah. it's not as difficult as it seems. Uh, 
What I really like to do actually is uh, take things from books and then make variations of them. Mm -hmm. uh, seems to be my strong point. Uh, I have to ask I'm you this. It might it might be dating you, but how uh, how many years? How long have you been? I've been doing it about thirteen years. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. Just, so just before when my you were born, born. Just around just when you were born. Yes, yes. Of course. Thank you. <laughs> You're very nice, and that's why I like to come on the show. Oh, there right, we now, go. Uh, if you want to pick this up a little bit, uh, I want to know show you that there's a, a bit of a, a pocket mm -hmm. right in right in there. Actually, there's a, a pocket in there, Ooh. and there's also a pocket on the other side right there and you can use either side it doesn't matter but whichever side you choose you got to use the same side all the way around okay. and I find it easier to do it with the right hand pocket so I'm going to open up the little pocket mm -hmm. and when I lift it up a little bit I'm going to swivel this over and it might look easier on the table mm -hmm. swivel it over and squash it down oh, so is that you, you get lifted? that kind of look oh, and you see wow. when you turn it over it okay. gives you that Okay, oh, and we're going to do that here, here, and here. And it's okay, okay to... Uh, and it's okay to get a little messy on this one. Okay, so now, you just do that all yeah. the way now around. Now, sometimes, some people have trouble getting that little pocket open. If you've got a mm -hmm. pencil or a pen, oh. and then just kind of poke it in there to, mm -hmm. to help. Okay, do that all the way around. That is so nifty. And with practice, this fold becomes quite easy. It's like finding a whole new world. Like I would not have noticed that little pocket there. But it's easy enough to miss. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at that. Okay. And mm -hmm. that's what it looks like from the back once all four of those are done. Let's see. Okay. There we go. There. I think this one has gone flat on me a little bit, if that's possible. Okay. So, you know, what's happening with yours, uh, if you had a little pen or pencil to poke right to the end here, Ah, now, okay. open that up completely, you wouldn't get that little bit of mess there. But that's okay. Mm -hmm. It's at the back and nobody's going to notice. Right. Now, okay. turn it over and take the original uh, points that you folded into the middle mm -hmm. and just fold a small up triangle back like that. Okay. Just Reminds me of the little bunny's nose or all something. All the way around. And that's just kind of to represent the center of the flower mm -hmm. magic mic. Okay. And, and this can be done neatly or not. The origins of origami. Um, yeah, a little bit of controversy. Uh, it's a Japanese, considered a Japanese art, mm -hmm. and most people consider it to have started in Japan, but there are those who think that it actually started in China. Oh, uh, okay. Well, you see, Chinese people are generally given credit for inventing paper, mm -hmm. and uh, they do have their own kind of tr paper folding tradition, and so why not? Sure. Let's give them credit for it. Sure. All right, that's pretty much the very simple flower. Are you kidding? Yeah. Oh, so all. it is. Yeah, wow. there it is. Just mm -hmm. like we showed over here. I wow. Can hold well, that's that not so bad at all. <laughs> Ooh, there we are. It's hiding. <laughs> just, wow. just like that, you see? Now, do we have time to make a stem and a leaf? Sure, we do. Okay. Of course, sure. Put that back down and just lay that over here for a moment. The stem is very simple. You simply take the rectangle mm -hmm. and make a, a narrow fold about, what, what are we using here? Centimeters? About a centimeter. Okay. Like that. And just keep rolling it up. Oh. Like so that. you just, just continue. Yeah, just continue rolling it up until there's no more to roll up. Okay. Okay. That is so wonderfully simple yet effective. Oh, it's so easy. That's the neat thing so about easy. it. Mm -hmm. And this paper, different color as you go along, mm -hmm. uh, really adds to it. Now, a little bit of glue with this doesn't mm -hmm. hurt, okay? okay? And you just put a little dab up here and take the flower itself and... Glue it on the back. Stick okay. it there, a little There's dabble of glue. Yeah. Little, ooh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. All right, now put this down, and we mm -hmm. will take the small square, and we're going to make a little leaf. Okay. okay. Very mm -hmm. simple leaf. Uh, fold it in half, like this. Once again, we're okay. going to find the center, all right? So we'll do the ah, same thing as we okay. did before. And so that's sort of a technique or a trick for finding yep. the center? Yep. Mm okay. -hmm. All right, open it up and, and again, fold the it other way. way. All right, okay. and this time we're only going to fold two corners to the center, uh, opposite corners, this one and this one, or this one and this one. Very good. Just okay. like that. Everybody can learn uh, okay. origami, huh? Everybody can learn it. Uh, it's best to go to a library, mm -hmm. get a book from the library, first of all. Uh, I never recommend people run out and buy origami books mm -hmm. right away. The reason being... Uh, it's for some people, it's not for other people. 
get the book from the library. It doesn't cost you any mm -hmm. money. You play if you like it, and see. go for it. Go out and buy mm -hmm. some books. Origami books are expensive, so mm -hmm. don't throw away your money at first. Try the library books first. Then if you like it, you can go and spend all the money you want on origami books. Sure. Okay? That's what I say about magic. People starting into magic, go to the library, take out tons of books, play mm -hmm. around and learn, and then... Uh, because magic books are expensive and props yes. are expensive. So I, I know Same I do a little magic myself. And mm -hmm. Hey, you know, know what you like. should do? You should come back and do a little something too. I, I might. You know, I'm, sure. I'm a little rusty, but I just might. That would be it. wonderful. Okay. Now, just take this and fold it in half mm -hmm. like that. And you can leave it just as it is and kind of glue it on like this oh, boy, or boy. like this for a leaf. Mm -hmm. But I like to do one more little thing with it. And notice there's a crease here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bend it at that crease. And then I'm going to make another small crease right along mm -hmm. here at an angle. And watch what happens. Oh, for a, a, goodness. A leaf sake. looks a little better. It does too. It has some style it to it. Out. It just sort of makes it point up a bit. So you have and a choice. Let's show them side by side you choice. when you okay. do it that way or the plain way. Or the plain way. See the mm -hmm. difference? There you go. Wow. So, and that's pretty much it. A little bit of glue on that to hold the leaf on, and Fantastic. you have a very, very beautiful origami flower. That is gorgeous. Will you come back? I'd love to. Anytime you 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 ask, I'll that be would here. be terrific. Thank you okay. so much, origami Bob Prayer. Well, next time, first class, please. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> no train tickets. <laughs> please, please. Let me at least get a hat. <laughs> <laughs> a goggles. Mm -hmm. You guys don't go away. We'll be right back with lots more magic and stuff. We'll see you soon. That's incredible. That's so cool. The reason for the switch to a more modern look was essentially I was guesting weekly on a modern day TV show that took place in an attic. And for me to walk on in medieval garb into this modern day attic did not make sense. And so I felt a little bit self-conscious about coming on and drawing in my medieval outfit or coming on and uh, teaching a trick or, or performing a magic trick for the host. So I decided I will switch my format. I think we did pretty good. I, I, I think so too. We just forgot half the work. So you can see the transition and I decided because we went from a medieval uh, kind of thing where I've got a lute shaped guitar and medieval very witchy props to modern day, modern day guitar and modern day castle. Someone eventually repainted the castle set. She did an amazing job. And um, I decided to differentiate for future, whatever you want to call it, for future reference, um, Magic Mike's Castle to the more modern Magic Mike and Company. Take a look at the intro. You can do anything you want, be anything you please, see anything you want, do anything you please. There is magic in the air. Moon dust everywhere Close your eyes and you'll see Hope and never believe You can do anything you want Be anything you please I also had a different puppeteer for a while while Daryl Scarrett was off and, and doing whatever he does. So um, that person brought to the table an ecology segment, a uh, craft segment, various other things of potential interest to our viewers, both young and old. Wow! Hey, let's hope we're not still eating the uh, same chocolate-covered pizza from 1989. Oh, you crazy dragon, we don't eat the same thing from 89. When Daryl returned to the show, it was just about the end of the series after nine years of recording every single week. Um, we went live to tape for just about all nine years of the taping of the show, except for the very last season. The very last season, we, we did what many other professional studio productions do, and that's come in and tape a month at a time. In our case, since we aired weekly, we taped four shows consecutively, and I'd line up my guests. They'd come at various times, appropriate times in the evening, where I could just plug them in and plug them out, much like what I did with some of the tricks on the show. I would plug in this trick for this show, or this song for that show, this guest, etc. And I just want to state, 
we were very grateful to have had the opportunity to fit in and promote the Young Magicians from the Society of Young Magicians, a branch of the Society of American Magicians. Let's do a song. Here we go. We, we, we want to sing to you. Happy birthday to you. Yeah, happy birthday, Wiz. Happy birthday to you. Yeah, don't forget the channel cake. Happy birthday, dear Wiz. Happy birthday to you. So we're coming to the end of this really cool retrospective. We had a lot of fun. Uh, people that were born in the 1990s and 1980s on will have no clue what we're talking about. People born a little bit earlier, say the 50s and 60s, maybe even into the 70s, would have grown up watching the show. We went through one, maybe two generations of, of people. I, I'm hearing that a lot of, uh, that it was actually three generations. However, but I'd like to wrap up the show at this point, this 31st anniversary retrospective, the way we would on the regular show. So, what do you say, boys? Everyone, it was both days. Hey, yeah, 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 we had so much fun. I think we're going to try doing this again. We'd like to thank all of you for visiting the castle, for joining in this retrospective. Simply amazing. How did you do that? Merry meet, merry part, and merry meet again. We'll see you all soon. Merry meet and merry part and merry meet again. See you next time. Oh, hey, take care, dudes and dudettes. We love you now. <laughs>